Welcome once again to Musings by Danon. Today we're going to continue our series discussing different archetypes in Commander. Before we get started, please like and subscribe. Group Hug is a well-known but not well-respected archetype in the EDH community, because you often help your opponents win the game before you have a chance to. Whether you're giving them extra creatures through cards like Feldegriff, letting them draw cards through Quain or Selvala, or letting them put stuff into play through cards like Kainos and Tiro, or Braids, you're helping your opponents out and enabling them to win the game faster. However, Group Hug relies on your opponents having those extra lands or creatures. Maybe they're playing politically and benefiting one player so that that player will attack other people. Maybe they're a mill deck that wants to draw everyone out. They could secretly be a chaos player and hoping to cast a thieves auction or a warp world at an opportune moment. Or perhaps they rely on spells like treacherous terrain or insurrection to win the game. Regardless of their chosen win con, group hug decks can suddenly win out of nowhere, but they are often slow and cumbersome. My personal favorite group hug commander is Zyrus the Writhing Storm. Many people, when they build Zyrus, build him as a wheel deck. While I don't mind having two or more commander decks of the same color identity, I didn't see the point in having two that were the same archetype, and I've already got a Locust God wheel deck. So I built Zyrus as a group hug deck with a lot of group draw effects. This time, I've created three versions of the deck. A $50 budget version, a $100-ish dollar budget version, and a $250 version. Links to all three deck lists below. The upgrades are easier this time compared to my Locust God deck, so hopefully my editor won't kill me. Let's start with the $50 version. As always, we'll be comparing the build to our checklist. 50 mana sources, split between lands and ramp, usually 37 lands and 13 pieces of ramp. 10 pieces of card advantage. 8 to 10 spot removal. 2 flexible tutors. 2 to 3 board wipes. And 1 surprise I win card. First of all, I wanted to have Zyrus as a group hug deck with Howling Mind type effects so that everyone was drawing cards. The reason for this is that Zyrus creates tokens whenever an opponent draws a card beyond their first one, but unlike Locust God, those tokens don't have haste. Because most wheel effects are sorceries, I wouldn't be able to attack with my snakes after I wheel and make 21 Slithery Boys until the next turn. Unfortunately, the original Howling Mind was too expensive to use in the $50 budget version, so it had to get cut. But I was able to include several effects that worked similarly. So for Howling Mine effects, I went with Dictated Crucifix, Fevered Visions, Howling Golem, and Well of Ideas. I do have a couple of wheels, but I tried to keep them friendly. So I went with Flux, Magus of the Wheel, and Game Plan. For group draw effects, we have Skyscribing, Words of Wisdom, Prosperity, Vision Skeins, Fascination, and Folio of Fancies. And I did want to have some group hug effects, so I've added Pendant of Prosperity, Veteran Explorer, Fecundity, and Humble Defector. For the core of our deck, we have Impact Tremors and Ominous Seas, Junk Wielder to help clear away blockers, Tetsuo Umezaka Fugitive to make our snakes unblockable, Nin the Pain Artist for additional draw as well as spot removal, and Enray's Forerunners and Drorail Molvani Recluse as finishers. As far as interaction goes, we have a couple of counterspells in Negate, Plasm Capture, and Dream Fracture. Plasm Capture is twice the mana cost of Mana Drain, but it's less than a dollar as opposed to almost 50, and it has the advantage of giving you colored mana. We are also running Split Decision, which is a fun card that doesn't see as much play as it should. Whether you're stopping an opponent from winning or ensuring everyone can cast their own copy of Cultivate depends on the situation and what your opponents are playing. For spot removal, we have Artifact Mutation, Reclamation Sage, Chaos Warp, Beast Within, Acidic Slime, and Comet Storm. Comet Storm also doubles as a board wipe with enough mana, but most will be using it to get rid of pesky creatures or planeswalkers. Rounding out the interaction package, Fog is just good old-fashioned fun, Wrong Turn can be hilarious and devastating to some decks, and Tidal Barracuda is a very underrated stacks piece that ensures people leave us alone on our turn. On top of Comet Storm, we have Star Storm and Aetherize as our board wipes. They're not much, but they are very budget-friendly. Moving on to card advantage, we don't have a lot because of all the group hug effects already in the deck, but we do have some. Reconnaissance Mission is amazing in a token deck. Frantic Search is basically free cards. Hunter's Insight works very well with our commander, and Kumana's Awakening starts as a group hug spell, but in commander, you quickly reach City's Blessing. We have a lot of high mana value spells in this deck, many with an X in their casting cost, so we do have quite a bit of mana ramp here. To start with, we have Soul Ring and Commander Sphere. We are also running all three of the Talismans, as well as the three Signets. Normally, with all the cards we're drawing, I'd rather run effects like Azusa Lost But Seeking that let us play more lands per turn, but even with her being reprinted in a core set, she's too expensive for a $50 budget. That being said, we do have Migration Path, 
Cultivate, Growth Spiral, Harrow, Natural Connection, Rampa Growth, Sakura Tribe Elder, Circuitous Root, and Sad Robot. Finishing off our Mana Ramp package is Battle Him, a great addition to any deck that generates a lot of creatures. For lands, we have Command Tower and Frontier Bivouac as our tricolor lands, Evolving Wilds, Terramorphic Expanse, and Myriad Landscape for color fixing, 9 tap lands, and 24 basics. Based on our color spread, we're looking at 11 islands, 9 forests, and 4 mountains. So let's compare our actual list to our checklist. 50 mana sources split between lands and ramp, usually 37 lands and 13 pieces of ramp. We have 56, 38 lands and 18 pieces of ramp. A little heavy, but as I said earlier, we have some mana intensive cards. 10 pieces of card advantage. 15 counting our commander and Nin, but most of them are group hug effects. 8 to 10 spot removal. 13, including our three counter spells. 2 flexible tutors. 0. Again, we're on a budget, so it's hard to add tutors. 2 to 3 board wipes. 2 plus Comet Storm with enough mana. And 1 surprise eye win card. And raise 4 runners serves this up nicely. So the deck works out, and $50 is a nice cheap budget for most Magic players. If you like how this deck plays, there's some upgrades that will push it up to about a $125 budget. First things first, we're going to be upgrading our group hug tactics and introducing a little chaos to the deck. We're going to cut game plan for Burning Inquiry, which drops the mana value. Next, we're replacing Fascination with Edrix by Master of Tress to introduce some politics to the deck. Finally, we're cutting Skyscribing for the original Howling Mine. To make sure we have additional win cons, we're replacing Joel Rail, Mulvoni Recluse, and Junkwinder with Perforos, God of the Forge, and Coat of Arms. Both of these are solid win conditions and make excellent inclusions to the deck. But most of our upgrade budget did go to these two cards. Additionally, we'll be removing Fog and Wrong Turn for Tachiova Benthic Druid for some additional card draw, and Hadana's Climb to help pump up our commander and be a possible but unreliable win con. For interaction, we're replacing Acidic Slime for Scavenging Ooze, and we're also cutting one of our basic lands for Commit Memory. Just between these two cards, we end up with two pieces of Graveyard Hate, a phenomenal piece of interaction, and a wheel effect. Additionally, we're going to cut both Solemn Simulacrum for Counterspell and a Circuitous Root for Farseek. Sad Robot is a great magic card, but we're trying to lower the average CMC of our deck so we can cast more than one card per turn. Circuitous Root is getting the axe because we're cutting our Guild Gates for check lands. We're also removing two more basics for a Yavamaya Coast and a Kessig Wolf Run. Our color balance also changed a little, so the basics now stand at 10 islands, 8 forests, and 5 mountains. This version of the deck has a bit more interaction and a few more win cons. The card draw, both personal and ensuring everyone draws cards so we can get lots of snakes, is also more consistent. And we have more lands that don't come into play tapped. But what can we do if we double the budget and go up to $250? The biggest upgrades for this, the most expensive version, are the lands. Shock lands have steadily gone up in price over the last few years, and they're not getting any cheaper. Steam Vents, Breeding Pool, and Stomping Ground are coming in for three of our tap lands, but we're keeping the tap lands that gain us life whenever they come into play. From experience, tap lands are almost always better than Evolving Wilds, but we don't want all of our lands coming into play tapped. Additionally, we can cut another basic for a Shivan Reef. This version doesn't run them, but enemy fetch lands are a bit more affordable right now with the release of Modern Horizons 2, so you may want to look into picking some up. If you do, I'd cut the last of the tap lands for them and make room for a Ketria Triome. Our ramp and draw packages are also vastly improved. Subbing in for Vision Skeins, Words of Wisdom, and Folio of Fancies are a Dryad of the Elysian Grove, an Azusa Lost But Seeking, and a Teferi's Puzzle Box. Howling Golem is being replaced by Teferi's Ageless Insight. Dream Fracture is getting upgraded to Arcane Denial, and though I really love Plasm Capture, Narset's Reversal can be game-winning in some scenarios. Split Decision gets subbed out for Cyclonic Rift, and our last change is swapping Magus of the Wheel for Locust God, another optional win con. With all the changes to the deck, we're now looking at 9 islands, 9 forests, and 5 mountains as our basics package. The bare bones version of this deck is a lot of fun to play, but upgrading it does help smooth things out. Having both Impact Tremors and Perforos' win cons makes the games end a lot quicker, and Coat of Arms can be a lot of fun as well, but you don't want to play it until you've already got quite a few snakes in play. Try not to play your group hug draw effects until after you have Zyrus on board, but I know that's not always an option. This deck has a lot of ramp, so don't worry if you only have draw effects in your opening hand. You'll soon draw into additional ramp and help your opponents draw lots of cards. Thanks for tuning in. 
I really love Zyrus as a commander and want to limit myself because of how strong wheel decks can be. That being said, my personal build of Zyrus is still very strong and capable of holding its own against just about anything except for CEDH decks. Once again, a huge shout out to my editor, Cute Stuff. I couldn't make these videos without her. If you'd like to hire her to edit your own videos, there's a link to her Fiverr page below. Please like and subscribe for more content, and I'll see you all again next week.